Hello and welcome to this CNBC TV 18 Zetwork Smart Manufacturing Summit. Our focus today on the defense sector, the journey from being a net importer towards a journey of self-reliance. This is the focus of our discussion today. And over the past many decades, India has been trying to have a certain degree of self-reliance in the defense manufacturing sector. We have been trying to reduce our import footprint as well because this is important for our operational needs in a highly volatile and fast-changing geopolitical environment. Let me uh, bring in our stellar panel. We are joined by uh, Dr. C.G. Krishandas Nair, President of the Society of Indian Aerospace Technologies and Industries. We are joined by Mr. Bhanu Prakash Srivastav, CMD of BEL, uh, a very important defense PSU. We are also joined by uh, former Air Chief Marshal RKS Badoria. Thank you very much, sir, for joining us. We are joined by Arun Ramchandani, Executive Vice President and Head of LNT Defense, a company which has been working with the uh, many of the uh, defense contracts over the past uh, few decades. We also have with us Radhika P, CBO of Pinaka, a Zetwork company, and finally, Andleep Shadman, MD of Hensolt. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for uh, joining us. Let me begin with Air Chief Marshal Badoria. Uh, so, over, over the last few decades, what is the kind of transition that you've seen yourself when we speak about reducing our import footprint in the defense sector? What are some of the challenges that you've seen throughout your career? And, and really, where are we with this self-reliance and Atma Nirbharta journey currently? You know, firstly, uh, if we look at our security situation and what we are uh, supposed to achieve as a air power, we are in a very competitive uh, environment uh, security-wise uh, on the Western Front and on the Northern Front, and on the Northern increasingly so. So must understand that uh, given our security situation, the need for... Indian Air Force and uh, Air Power to be really uh, absolutely cutting edge uh, was always a requirement. And uh, over the last decade, even more so, I would say. Uh, like you said, uh, initially, a lot of reliance on the imports. Thereafter, uh, there was uh, many projects which was made in India in terms of setting up manufacturing under license. Over the last decade, uh, as we all know, the, there was a big thrust towards Indianization. A uh, big thrust towards making our own uh, weapons and platforms and sensors. Let me uh, get in Mr. Bhanu Prakash Srivastav. Sir, from your example, and uh, many of us here in the audience would also know that very recently, uh, BEL received an order from the Indian Army. They won that contract to supply uh, electronic fuses, and it is worth over 5,500 crores. So, sir, I'd like to ask you, when we speak about indigenization, we've seen five indigenization lists come out. To what extent a PSU like yours has been able to indigenize products for the need of our defense forces? Then indigenization, our basic R&D has been a thrust of Bharat Electronics right from beginning. We have focused on uh, uh, in-house R&D. We have focused on our uh, collaboration with the DRDO labs to make sure that we indigenize the product and support our services. Uh, we were the first in 1988 to establish Central Research Laboratory here at Bangalore and later on Gaziabad to work on futuristic uh, technologies. And if you see that today, 76% of our turnover, it, it comes through indigenous technology, whether it is our own in-house R&D or through uh, collaboration with DRDO and other, other laboratories. Wherever we have collaborated also from foreign sources, we have made sure that we absorb the technology and then we come out with the uh, upgrades and the new products based on learning from uh, imported technology. So that has been our endeavor. And the last uh, uh, decade, what uh, Air Chief Marcel Badurias sub told, uh, there has been a major thrust from uh, government of India, and Bell has been a beneficiary for that, especially when positive indigenization lists have been uh, uh, issued uh, by government of India. There are many, many products where we are in, we are working and we are making sure that country uh, becomes Satan Nirbhar. Uh, and we are, we are very aggressive on uh, research and development. Mr. Ramchandani, if I were to ask you, we were hearing about R&D spends. Is that a big focus for you as well? When we speak about CapEx deployment, is the majority of the CapEx going towards R&D spends into future innovation, future technologies? So, uh, just like BL, you know, we have been around for a long time uh, in the sector, 
and uh, largely we were focused on DRDO projects till uh, you know the sector got licensed and in 2001 we became a industrial licensed defense company and were permitted to sell directly to the MOD. So the fact that we had our grounding in R&D has uh, enabled us to continue that focus on R&D and uh, we too spend a good percentage of our uh, turnover on R&D and that is certainly increasing. Uh, we have also invested into infrastructure and facilities, you know. So we have six work centers which are dedicated to defense production and it ranges from, you know, warship building and submarine building to communication equipment. So the spectrum is pretty large and we've created all this infrastructure uh, within the company over the years, you know, since the licenses were made available and uh, yet kept a strong focus on R&D. Mr. Adhika, I'd like to ask you about uh, areas that Pinaka has been uh, investing in, uh, interested in, in terms of uh, manufacturer point of view and also catering to the needs of the armed forces. We know that as part of the positive indigenization list as well as the negative import list and also the latest uh, Defense Acquisition Council allocation of 2.23 lakh crores mm. of rupees. So in that, definitely there are a lot of areas which we will be participating. And uh, all this is possible because Pinaka's mainstay mm. was in these areas where we have been successfully uh, developing systems and deploying them operationally. Mm. So in addition to this, uh, we are very much excited about participating in this electronic warfare and mm. radar related programs. Mm. This has been one of the uh, major areas of our own uh, uh, previous track record. Mm. And we have, I know as uh, Baduria sir pointed out, future wars are fought mainly in the electromagnetic spectrum. Right. So we look forward to participating in these major areas. Mm. And uh, we are very sure that we will be able to bring the indigenization content in this series. Right. When it comes to the maintenance, repair and servicing of our current uh, fighter fleet, uh, is, the, is it uh, something that you have been involved in in, in some way? Definitely. In fact, uh, we have, uh, I would like to quote a couple of projects which uh, we were very successful. One is for the quick reaction missile system, surface to air missile system. Uh, where we have developed the alignment equipment. Uh, this was a requirement because it was obsolete as well as it was highly manual. And uh, then at that uh, point of time, we stepped in, we understood the system with uh, no technical literature. And then we were able to build the system in the contemporary technology. And uh, this we have done in a very short span of time. It was operationally used and deployed and is serving that. Many companies register themselves under MOD, but few have operationally deployed products. Yeah. We are proud to say we are one among them. It was one of the very great projects done, very difficult one. Uh, technic uh, technically and technologically very, very uh, tough. And uh, a lot of people said it can't be done. And we said, no, give it to the private industry. And it was done. Oh, that's a good example. Yeah. Good example yeah. of uh, collaboration between the defense forces and the private sector. Uh, Antli, I'd like to come come to you now. When it comes to India's transformation as an uh, importer of defense equipment towards self-reliance, what are some of the major changes you've seen on the ground? Uh, I want to begin with the statement that there cannot be a better time to be in the field of defense than this is now. Mm. Uh, I say this uh, with the full confidence and especially after the rollout of last DAP 2020 when the, the industry started feeling the, the implementation effect of it, which basically happened post-corona. Uh, I would say the beginning of 2022, I would say. And uh, as a foreign company and as a private company, we have seen the the completely change in the dynamics. We have seen uh, 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 such, such a vibrant market. I don't think that a, for a foreign company, anything as interesting as India 
they would find anywhere else. So this is exactly the reason why most of the foreign companies are here in India. They see this market as a very attractive market. Things are changing. Things are changing for a good. And uh, the kind of a openness that uh, our, 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 um, our MOD has shown, especially in terms of opening up the policies for a better participation of a private sectors, I think this is the best time to be in. Uh, Dr. Nair, thank you very much for joining us uh, on the program. When it comes to India's aerospace sector, to what extent do you think we have managed to indigenize if we were to ask you for a percentage? And what should the aspiration be? When India was, as you know, was making only licensed production and very limited amount of indigenous design and development, some started but did not succeed because when you have a mix of licensed production and indigenous development, unfortunately in our country there are many kind of pressures. Uh, uh, you can't wait because get all the technologies in and get what is latest. By the time, something better is available. So our armed forces have to fight with the latest, at least the latest of what they can get. So therefore, there was a conflict. So the, the indigenous development with respect to aerospace, missiles, all took the back bench. But then the awakening came. You know? First, if you how to produce it, cost effectively. There is no use uh, of making everything by HL or Bell, uh, uh, whatever they can within the limited resources. The rest is imported and assembled. So even in the license production, those days, it was not more than 30%. Right. So we took a decision to start an industry association. Hmm. Because we had no industry association, there was only one industry, a chain. Mm. Right. So we wanted a private sector to come in. We decided mm. that if, if you want to become a global player, you need to work, improve your quality, cost and delivery. What are the next set of reforms that you think are necessary to drive indigenization, make sure the private sector can play a bigger role? I think the onus is really with the industry, with the DRDO to, to make it happen, with DPSUs. The, they are the primary, I think, uh, uh, flag bearers and drivers of this Atmanirvata. They need to involve the private sector, the startups, the real uh, MSME sector, the uh, real you know, technological innovation where it is happening. So R&D and innovation is the key, I think. Unless we have our own IPRs and own, own R&D, real steps that are required to be taken uh, for private sector to be brought in, uh, like uh, Naisa said, cost, uh, you know, efficiencies uh, and time delay, quality. These three, four things are the crux. And, and, and uh, all these things will improve uh, and our uh, rate, et cetera, and IPRs only when the private sector MSMEs and startups come. It is not happening at the rate it should happen, despite the reforms. What do you feel about having joint ventures with defense PSUs? Uh, could you give us a sense of collaborations with the public sector right now in terms of defense manufacturing? What are the kind of collaborations and partnerships that we need for the future? Now, coming to the question of public-private partnership, uh, I think that is happening today. We are, uh, you know, uh, reaching out, both sides are reaching out to each other and looking at how they can work together. Talking about joint ventures, I would say that, uh, you know, the public sector is still controlled by a lot of GFR and a lot of regulations, which we feel that if we have a joint venture with the public sector, it would be constraining. So we are happy to do, you know, consortium work and work together. The cooperation is happening. We are certainly working together. We are seeing how we can address programs together. We can leverage each other's strengths better. Right. Uh, Mr. Bhavan Prakash, final thoughts. As you were hearing, Mr. Ramchandani, uh, how can we get over these mindset issues between the 
public and private sector. And about investing in AI, how much are you doing that uh, in terms of future warfare capabilities? Uh, two things, as far as uh, what uh, Mr. Ramchandran was telling, long time we have been collaborating both with LNT, Tata, and many big players also, and many programs of strategic importance to the country where we have been partner and we have been serving the uh, country. So it is going on as far as joint venture is concerned. Yes, uh, there are challenges in joint venture because definitely uh, public sector units where government control is more than 50 percent, uh, 51 percent, or more than 50 percent, there are certain rules and guidelines and uh, requirements which we have to follow, which restricts our flexibility. Definitely it is there. So current arrangement of consortium partner and partnership and uh, uh, having a work share arrangement and addressing the requirement together, I think it's uh, uh, fair enough we are doing. All big, big uh, private sectors, uh, Bharat Electronics as a company, we are working together for a national cause. Other private sector, if you see, we are supporting uh, many MSME. Though government guidelines says that 25% of our domestic procurement should be from MSME. Last year, we procured more than 32% from uh, domestic MSME. We are also have a collaborative partnerships with many design agencies, startups, and definitely uh, we are supporting them, uh, funding them their development projects also, and that is required because we cannot depend upon only government to fund these startups and innovations. It's a responsibility of the big organizations like also, whether it is in public sector and private sector to nurture this ecosystem. Then only there will be uh, that uh, catalyst uh, which will be there to uh, bring out the innovations. As far as uh, uh, latest cutting edge technology, including AI, so we are working on almost all aspects of technology, including AI. We have a, our Center for Artificial Intelligence in our Central Research Laboratory. Uh, big team is working on that. Two aspects we are doing. We are working to introduce or incorporate AI in our products and solutions also, what we offer to uh, defense services and to uh, other customers, and also to bring out some of the AI products in cases where we can uh, we can offer it as a standalone products. We are also collaborated with uh, services. In fact, a joint uh, development uh, center on uh, artificial intelligence with AI we have set up in uh, our Bangalore uh, area. So. And Leib, uh, are there any uh, future growth opportunities that you see in the India market that you would like to invest in? Everyone knows uh, for in the technology industry what India is famous for, software. The software capabilities of India, I mean, we, it's, it's world-renowned. Everyone recognizes us for that. I think we have not fully utilized or untapped the software potential in the domain of defense so far. And this is definitely one of the area where I would like to be, uh, uh, to see that we do much more work in software development in R&D, and software is very much close to R&D, I would right. say. Yeah. Right, thank you. And what about you, Radhika? Whatever has been spoken here is an opportunity for us. Being in the private sector of defense, first thing is all the policies are very favorable. This is the best time. And uh, next is working with the PSUs, complementing and supplementing them. It's a very good relation that we already have with the uh, Bells and Hals. Right. And of course, uh, with foreign companies like uh, Hensolt, we're looking forward to join joint ventures, the partnerships and co-development and in the stricter sense of uh, TOT, actually. Right. And we feel that we, with all this, we'll be able to contribute to the economic growth of the country and probably more by way of exports. We've run out of time, but thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us on the program. Very important thoughts. Clearly a masterclass for anyone looking to enter the defense sector, foreign companies looking to invest and set up shop in India as well. Thank you for watching uh, this special program on the road ahead for India's defense sector.